Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you guys like, subscribe, keep up with what I'm putting down. Today, we're gonna to be talking about time attack. Basically, I wanna dive down this rabbit hole, jump into rules, I wanna jump into the background, my personal background, anything that you guys wanna talk about, about time attack, let's chat about it. My start in time attack came when I was doing track days. We had an all-wheel drive competition, which was a time trials effort, and uh, there was basically no alternative. Um, when I started, Redline had died because they killed themselves into an abyss. Um, GTA was starting, I believe, or something of that nature, um, and I just didn't really know anything about it. Uh, being a novice, I came to the track, I did my thing, um, and then, as we kept doing these all-wheel drive competitions, things were kind of building up and building up. You know, just like anything else, you get a little bit better here, a little bit better there, you modify your car a little bit here, a little bit there. And uh, basically what happened was, I, I'd been in contact with a good friend named Joe from Eastside Muffler who had run in Super Lap Battle from back in the day. Me and him kind of going back and forth, and he said, why don't you just run Super Lap? So, Eventually, I tricked him into coming to help me run in my first super lap battle ever in 2012. And that was my very first, very first time attack event. So I went there, I placed, I want to say fourth, um, just off the podium, and it, and it bit me hard. It bit me real hard. Uh, got lucky, and just after that, going into 2013, Redline decided they were gonna come back. So Redline started running all these time attack events in Southern California again. Um, and that just allowed me to basically push forward and start building that. Um, I got in with Yimmy Sport and we talked about ideas and we started building the car. At the beginning, it, it was a stock car. From the outside, as you can see here, it's literally a stock car. Um, we went out, we did some E85. We made, I think, I want to say it was something like 365 horsepower. Um, nothing crazy. And did a time attack event in street class. Uh, had a ton of fun. Um, we ended up winning the very first round in our class. And it just propelled us from there. It was probably one of the most fun seasons ever. It was a bone stock motor and a car that was essentially pretty stock overall. But we built it up over time. As, as that time went on, we did things like splitters, wings, and added a little bit more power, went to a, a Borg Warner 6258 based on the rules that, Borg, uh, that Redline actually had at the time. So we ended up making like 427 horsepower at the end. But we won every single event in that year, and that just pushed us even further. So as I went into the next year, uh, we were just looking to figure out how to go faster. We went into the 2014 season and with a few rule changes to Redline Time Attack, allowing a bigger turbo and so on and so forth, we were able to go to 550 wheel horsepower uh, in 2015. Um, we also stepped up a little bit and we were doing a few global time attack events that they did here in Southern California. So we were double dipping. We were going to every time attack event that we could get our freaking hands on. Um, which was awesome. Uh, we ended up doing Road Atlanta that year uh, and, and went out there, we missed the record at Road Atlanta set by Professionally Awesome, which still missed me a little bit to this day because other than that, every track we went to, every time we went out, we set a new record. Which, I don't know about you guys, but just so you know, that's hard. That's not something you just go out and magically fall into. You're, set, you're, you're challenging records set by people that have vast skill sets that were operating on different rules. Now granted, we go into the new age of new tires and new compounds and obviously better turbochargers. It's evolution of technology. Of course, it's always going to be better. But it's, it's one of those things where if you look back, people forget that when you look back at the olden days of time attack, uh, rules were different. You could run wider tires. You, you could do different things. 
it's definitely a different game now than it ever has been before and it continues to evolve and change um, some of the news that was just passed here recently was that SCCA is now going to be intertwined more with GTA and grid life which we're all kind of in the time attack world are all standing back and looking and going what does this mean what does this do for us is this a positive is this a negative are the rules going to be the same are things going to be different better I don't know, but I'd love to discuss that more. So uh, comment below if you want to have a discussion about it. Uh, I'd love to have you guys have inputs, um, but let's talk about this. I think there's a lot to talk about in the time attack community. It's just a matter of getting people together at the right time and not internet battle wars it. Let's, let's sit down and actually have a conversation. Um, beyond that, so beyond that, going into 2015, um, that was one of those years that we decided, you know what, we, we've dominated street class for two straight years. Um, it's time to move on. You know, you, you gotta move up, move out, let other people have their fun, so on and so forth. And really at that point, we were literally just trying to break our own records. So, didn't make much sense. We moved up to limited class, uh, which, let me tell you, that was one of those things where we said, oh yeah, this will take like three months. That was the longest three months of my life as it took an entirety of 12 to get to that point. So we took a street class car, made it into a limited class car, and let me tell you, it did not go well. We had all sorts of issues the entire year. I mean, obviously just time. It took forever to gut the car and pull everything out, fender clearancing. Um, trying to go lightweight everything instead of our standard street class buy it off the shelf stuff which inherently was interesting because we ended up making these parts or having other people make these parts for us that later then turned into parts that people could then just buy so we went through the difficult portion of this and now you guys can just go click add to cart and buy it so great for you guys terrible for me um, but overall, uh, it was an experience. Um, the team had to work ridiculously hard. I still remember um, one of our teammates, Oscar, he joined the team and he joined the team right after the Super Lab 2014, I believe. And he came and he's like, man, I thought we were gonna go to a racetrack. All we're doing is sitting here at a shop working on a car. I thought this was a race team. Uh, so yeah, it, it was terrible. Um, as much as we all love working in the, in the garage and working on the cars, myself, I'd rather be at the racetrack. I'd rather be running the car, beating the car up, having a good time. You know, working on the car is one thing, it's fun for a little bit, but I'd rather be racing. So, 15 did not end well either. So we get to the track, we run it, and just the entire time, our oil pressure was looking garbage. Um, yeah, funny, huh? Oil pressure, garbage. Yeah, been there. Um, but this is pre-dry sump. So that motor ended up uh, roasting some bearings, main bearings, and but it lasted to the very last session of the very last day. So it did its work as a time attack car. So then we go into 2016 and had a great old time all year, set a couple records that year, and it was great. And I think you guys know 2017 and 2018 pretty well. If you don't, you know, comment below. Maybe I'll talk about it some more. But I just want to touch base a little bit on time attack in general, right? We all go out there and, and people just don't understand time attack. People, people just don't understand why you'd want to go out for one or two hot laps. They think, you know, I'd rather go out for an entire session, 20 minutes, and, and get as many laps as I can. But there's something about going out for that pure one lap wonder. The one lap where you put it all on the line and go as fast as humanly possible in a car that you can't, it's not a race car. It's not a tube chassis. That's not time attack. Time attack has nothing to do with tube chassis cars or cars that are built from the factory as race cars. That's not time attack. If you disagree, comment below, we'll talk about it. But I'd, that's not what I think. Time Attack is a car that a shop built or you built in your garage. My car from day one has either taken place in my garage or at Yimmy Sport. We've constantly worked hard on the car all the time. 
And I understand people go, man, I just don't understand you. You should be out of the, sh- you should be out of the track more. You should be doing more. But, but they have to understand that it's me, myself, Paul, the owner of Yumi Sport. We're the ones working on the car. It's not like we have a, a field of techs that are working on it Monday through Friday. It's we're giving up every Saturday and Sunday or giving up long nights at the shop. That's what Time Attack is. It's dedication, time given to the car. I mean, I, I, I know too many guys that in Time Attack that have spent multiple, multiple hours getting ready, prepping, getting everything ready to go to the track, blow it up, very first lap, very first session, but that's Time Attack. So we're on our way to Butt Willow. We just worked through the night. We're on our 26 or 28. Um, we got all our new aero on. We got the car dynoed. Everything's new. Everything's awesome, um, but yet untested. So we're going into Super Lab Battle. We're showing up hours late with an untested setup, but we're gonna give it our all. You're still having fun at the end of the day. I mean, you, you just, that's something that dedication that you just can't teach someone. That's something that's within them. That's something that your, your motivation to get there is just something that is unfathomable by most people because they don't have that drive. You know, I think that it does take a special person to have that kind of drive. And when they find that thing that they want to have that kind of drive about, it's impossible to stop them. And I think that's what makes a big difference between the guys who succeed in Time Attack and the guys that come out for a season or two, have their fun, and move on, or do whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those guys either. You know, obviously if you find your, that Time Attack's really not for you, or, you know, you're JP and you think that, you know, you're better wheel to wheel racer than Time Attacker. <laughs> then, you know, all I can say is go do those other things. There, there's a plethora of things you can do in motorsports. Um, the great thing about Time Attack is you, know, you got guys that Time Attack, that Hill Climb, that Time Trial, that Wheel to Wheel, and all that stuff comes together because, yeah, people say it's a glorified qualifying lap. Well, guess what? In F1, you qualify on pole what's the likelihood that you're gonna win the race? I'm betting it's a lot better than if you start from the back of the pack. So, I believe Time Attack definitely have its, has its place in motorsports. It's, it's one of those skills to lay down the fastest lap that you could ever possibly put down that some people just don't have. Some people have to restrain and pull back and just can't get 10 tenths out of the car. So, let's hear your comments. Love to talk more about this. I love to dive into Time Attack more. I want to hear what you guys think about it, what you think it is. Let's agree, let's disagree, let's talk about it. And you make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Let's talk Time Attack.